Welcome back to Docket 360. I am your host, D, and today I present you with a question. Who was Jack the Ripper? Jack the Ripper, a name which is synonymous with serial killer, murdered five women over a two-month span in 1888. Mary Ann Nichols, Annie Chapman, Elizabeth Stride, Catherine Eddowes, and Mary Jane Kelly all fell victim to the Ripper. For over 200 years, the true identity of this prolific killer has never been known. However, a recent discovery in the form of a diary has been uncovered that could lead to the true name of this madman. There have been several theories about the identity of Jack the Ripper. One of the most compelling is that Jack the Ripper and H.H. H. Holmes were one and the same. If you've never heard of H.H. H. Holmes, he was the owner and operator of what is now known as the Murder Castle. During the span of 1891 through 1894, the year he was caught, he ran a hotel in Chicago, Illinois. This wasn't your average hotel. The place was rigged with gas jets used to knock out his victims before he would torture and murder them. Some of his victims would be used for human experimentation before their untimely deaths. Also constructed throughout the building were trap doors and chutes so he could move his victims around without being noticed. This was a hotel where guests would truly check in, but never check out. He was caught in 1894 and he was arrested for insurance fraud. When police went to search the hotel, that's when they discovered what Holmes had been up to. He confessed to killing 27 people. However, through missing persons reports and hotel logs, it is estimated that this number can be closer to 200. He was eventually executed by hanging in 1896. The theory behind H.H. H. Holmes and Jack the Ripper being one and the same is based on the fact that the Ripper's last victim was found in 1888, and Holmes' supposed first victim was murdered in 1891, according to Holmes. The problem with this is the fact that Holmes moved to Chicago in 1886. However, since Holmes came from a prominent family and money was not an issue, it is theoretically possible he traveled from the U.S. to the U.K. on occasion. With the construction of the hotel in 1891, his time to travel would have been limited, since the only way to cross the Atlantic at this time was by ship, and this took a week or more one way. If he stopped traveling in 1891, this could make sense that this is the time that the Ripper killing stopped. Not only does the time frame add up, but so does the way the victims were murdered, tortured, and with signs of human experimentation and mutilation. Recently, a discovery was made that could put an end to all the theories surrounding Jack the Ripper and H.H. H. Holmes. In 1992, a Liverpool scrap metal merchant named Michael Barrett came forward with a journal. He claimed a friend by the name of Tony Devereaux gave him a year earlier. Inside the journal was a diary. Even though the author's name is never mentioned in the book, there are several references and other information that points to a prominent Liverpool cotton merchant by the name of James Maybrick. In the diary, Maybrick refers to his wife as the bitch and the whore. He claimed he saw his wife with her lover in the Whitechapel district of Liverpool. The anger and rage he felt sent him into a murderous rage, he explains in his diary. He also goes into great detail about the murders, the victims, and why he killed them. The diary ends with this final entry. I give my name that know of me, so history do tell. What love can do to a gentle man born, yours truly, Jack the Ripper. If this diary is truly that of Maybricks, the mystery of Jack the Ripper could be solved. However, Michael Barrett later confessed to forging the diary, a claim which he later retracted. This does bring the authenticity of the diary into question. There's one other detail that makes the historians question the diary. The entries involving Mary Kelly's murder inside 13 Miller's court. The diary states that Mary Kelly was dismembered and he had thrown parts of her body all over the room, even hung some like Christmas decorations. 
He also claims he removed her breasts and kissed them for a while before placing them on a bedside table. However, the crime scene tells a different story. All parts of Mary Kelly were on the bed. Nothing was thrown around or hung, and her breasts were not on a table, but tucked neatly under her body. Along with the diary, a watch was discovered, having all five victims' names engraved inside. The signature, J. Maybrick, along with the inscription, I am Jack, were also found carved inside the watch. Analysts determined the scratches and engravings do, in fact, fit the time period of 1888. James Maybrick died in 1889, one year after the last Ripper victim was found. There were claims that his wife poisoned him. She was later found not guilty in 1904 and released from prison. Did she find out Maybrick's secret and decide to take the law into her own hands? The two theories I've discussed here are just that, theories. The evidence is compelling in both cases, but both have holes. Did H.H. H. Holmes travel back and forth from the U.S. to the U.K. just to murder? To me, that seems unlikely when he had great plans for the murder castle. Is the diary real? The statement from Michael Barrett saying it was forged and then retracting his statement makes me question this as well. Then there is the watch. Science dates it to the time period and it is engraved with Maybrick's name and the message, I am Jack. This all raises more questions than answers. What do you believe? Could either of these theories be true or even possible? Please, let me know your opinions and thoughts in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button and subscribe. And don't forget to share it with your friends. And if you have content that you'd like to see in one of my future videos, please send it over to docket360 at gmail.com or send me a DM on Twitter at Docket360. And as always, have a good night.